just like I said, Ed could talk his way into everything. He could also talk you into some ideas that may not be the greatest thing. And he said, well, why don't you just drive it home? So many moons ago, not too many moons ago, we tried to right the world's wrongs and put the 1994 Chevy Lumina that I own back on the track. And it is the only surviving Winston Cup car from the very first Brickyard 400. It is sponsored by the city of Indianapolis. I live in Indianapolis. So here is what happened when we tried to put it back on the track. Of course, the first year we tried to do it, we got completely rained out. It rained like the second coming of Christ. All we did that day is just go, man, it would have been really cool if we could have done this that day, but we knew we were rained out. So then we got tickets to Breakfast at the Brickyard 2023. The coolest part about going to Breakfast at the Brickyard is you get to drive a lap around the track. And I have invited my friend Ed Bullion up. I've invited countless other YouTube friends and just friends in general that are going, I want to be there to witness me turn onto the track with the Lumina one more time and take at least one more lap. And I would just, you know, all the stars would align and everything would be good. It had rained all night but we woke up to a beautiful morning and Ed had driven up from Atlanta and Rob Pitts came up and all of our friends were ready to go. We met each other at the Speedway High School, which the city of Speedway had allowed me to park my truck and trailer there and unload the Lumina because you turn in turn four, drive around the back through three and then go catch the track in two. So we were ready to go and this is my opportunity. And I'm one of those people that if I'm gonna do something, I wanna share it with all my friends. And it's just my personality type. My wife has had me personality to type 10 times and I always come out to be this over crazy person that for some reason cares about everybody else but not himself. So I went out there that morning and it's gorgeous and everybody's ready to go and the birds are chirping like it, it couldn't be better. It's like might as well angels might have sung that morning. So I drive the truck, drive the trailer, get to the high school parking lot, which is about four blocks away from the speedway. We unload it and I get a call from one of our other friends that came with us and said, hey, they've canceled the 500 track lap. And I go, oh, get out of here because it's pretty, it's gorgeous, it's time to go. And so I completely didn't believe him. I thought he was you know, blowing us a big line of crap. We drove down 26th Street, hung a left on Georgetown, hung a right into the Motor Speedway and the yellow shirts there said, you are right the track lap has been canceled. And I'm looking at it and I'm like going, why has this been canceled? Of course, I've got all my friends from all over the planet here with me. This thing is running and driving. I put new tires on a 1994 Chevy Lumina and the Winston Cup tires and the, the Goodyear's Eagles now are not easy to get because they have changed to a completely different car. So I've got this thing ready to go. It's got sticker tires on, like this is ridiculous. And of course I'm arguing with the yellow shirt guy. I can't hear, he can't hear me. So we just go ahead and pull in the track. And then I am ready, I'm going around the back to turn three and their yellow shirt's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I said, well, you know, I'm gonna go around the track. They're like, you can't go on the track because the jet dryers are on the track. And I'm like, what does that matter? Juan Pablo Montoya hit a jet dryer at Daytona. I was completely ready to do some Juan Pablo Montoya stuff, but they had blocked us. And after all this planning, one more year again, we were denied to drive the Winston Cup Chevy Lumina around the track. Needless to say, we went and parked in the infield. We all had a pretty big day that day, had a good time had some crazy unlimited access because you know a guy named Ed and he just walks to places he's not probably not supposed to be down through the pits. And so you just follow the tall guy. You're like, hey, Ed's going there, let's go there. We ate breakfast, we went through the pits, we had a good time, ended up with a VIP tour of the museum and generally all around had a good day. But somehow we had to get the Lumina back home. And I surely, surely was not going to put it in the back of the trailer again. Just like I said, Ed could talk his way into everything. He could also talk you into some ideas that may not be the greatest thing. And he said, well, why don't you just drive it home? And I'm like, like drive it home. And he's like, well, it's here, drive it. It's got brand new tires on it, drive it. Now granted, I live about 16 miles from the track and this is qualification day with about 150,000 people at the motor speedway. Ed's driving a Ferrari, Jared's driving my Ute. 
Alex Palmar is driving a wagon. All these other people, they're, they're like, yeah, why don't you just drive it home? So the Ed Bolian snowball that turns from this turns into a big one at the bottom of the hill. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna slide in this window. We're gonna drive down Crawfordsville Road to 465 in a Winston Cup car that has, sounds like a Winston Cup car, and we're gonna drive home. And so if you remember this thing, if you didn't know, this thing is built to turn left. And it is hotter than 10 hills that day. It was not the coldest day of the year. And I am in front leading Ed and his Ferrari and all of our friends. And we get to the stoplight to get on the highway. And I'm like, are we really going to do this? And Ed hangs out the window and takes this classic picture of both my Ute and the Winston Cup car getting ready to turn on the 465. We did it. First gear, second gear, third, fourth. And this thing is loud. And I have never really had it in fourth gear singing out. I mean, it is having a big time. The motor was put back together by Aaron Brown, who worked on Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s super speedway program. And the car has never been up to speed since 1994. And it qualified and it made the race. And here I am not driving it around the motor speedway. I'm driving it down 465. And there was countless videos of my friends taping me and, and going down there. And it is just loud on the highway. But you have to remember with the slick tires, it wants to follow everything in the road. Every dip, every paint mark, every stripe, every caulk, everything in the road. So it was probably one of the worst drives I've ever had. And then we get into some construction and any th kind of elevation change and everything, it's ready to follow that thing. All of these kids that find themselves fantasizing for a race car for the road, and they do all these modifications and roll cages and stuff, uh, the one that I drove down 465, it couldn't have been worse. It was probably one of the top 10 terrible drives I've ever had. Even before I got home, my phone goes off. And of course, you can't hear a thing in this car. And it is loud, loud, loud. And for some reason, I saw it buzz, and I looked down, and somebody had said, who is this guy I think he is driving this race car on the highway? And someone had pulled up right next to me in a minivan and videotaped me going down 465 before we ever made it to my property. And so we go all the way down 465. We make it right to my exit. We get off zigzag. And of course, thank goodness, the neighbors that love me so much were not home that day. But we drove from 16th and Georgetown because we were not allowed to drive it around the motor speedway that day and drove it all the way down to Crawfordsville, halfway around 465, got off at State Road 37 and right to my door. And so we did scrub the tires off and get the stickers off the brand new tires. Well, I guess we'll have to try it one more time. And maybe next year, when they go back to the Oval, they'll allow me to drive the 1994 Chevy Lumina, the corporate car of Indianapolis around the motor speedway one more time. We have extended our promotion with Celebrity Machine, so if you use the code VINWIKI, you'll still get a discount on the replica license plates from your favorite star cars, from your favorite movies and television shows. But if you go over to VINWIKI.com, you're gonna see a lot of license plates, like this replica of the plate from my Diablo from Japan, autographed Car Trek plates, and all of those came from Celebrity Machines as well. So if you're looking to have a promotional plate to pass out to fans, to use on some cars, or to do anything to promote your business, Celebrity Machines can handle that. Any any state, any characters, any country even, they can make it happen. So check them out now at the link in the description below. Use the code VINWIKI for a discount and thank them for their support of the channel.